YouTube as it going, the Goat House is back with the New York Jets preview, what to watch, what we can expect for this upcoming season. Uh, first comment on this video, which will decide which team I do next. We have a playlist on the channel full of all the teams that I have done. We will get to every uh, NFL team. We are definitely over halfway through. So check out those other ones. Uh, the Jets, I think most people believe they can be a good team, but it feels like mostly everyone is almost predicting them to have another injured season and kind of come up short. But what people don't really talk about is what if they're healthy? It's very realistic. Teams don't stay unlucky forever. Uh, really, the question is how good can they really be if they are healthy? We're going to talk about it here. Top three things, what to watch for. Number three, they are another one of those teams that have extreme offensive balance and Obviously, that's a good thing, but bigger picture, it's really big to have that because it, it creates a very tough game plan for opposing teams, opposing defenses, because you have to worry about the run game. You have to worry about the pass game. They complement each other. They open things up for each other, and, and it just keeps defenses guessing, keep, keeping them on their toes. Running game should be really strong, led by Brees Hall. We'll talk about him more in this video, but really an up-and-coming back. I mean, took off last year, equally effective on the ground, and uh, catching the ball in the backfield was dominant down the stretch as well. Uh, keeping them, they were a struggling team, but keeping them in games, you know, just being that big time factor. Uh, and they add Braylon Allen. You get a physical, more of a physical presence in the running back room. I like the band of Canada out of Pittsburgh last year. See if he gets something going. They draft Isaiah Davis as well. Uh, you know, and then Malachi Corley, who they draft as a receiver, could actually be involved in the run game uh, because of his after the catch ability or running back like style after, after the catch, um, but also be involved in the passing game with his speed with his, again, after the catch ability, I I'd imagine a lot of gadget plays for him overall. And that was kind of that last piece they needed for this year because they have Garrett Wilson near future elite receiver, a do it all type receiver. They add Mike Williams boundary contested catch stud. You know, maybe one of the best in, in that category. Lazard can be that possession type of receiver, Gibson's another, you know, athletic piece to watch. You know, Brownlee, another underrated guy to watch. They have options, you know, and then Corley is that kind of that that piece that they were missing that in terms of his style and that extra element you can bring uh, to this offense. So that should be pretty fun. But we talked about the passing game, but those receivers, and if Aaron Rodgers stays healthy, obviously he can sling the ball. Obviously he's very smart, can throw the ball, find open receivers. Uh, and, you know, and the offensive line, if it's healthy, should hold up and keep them, uh, you know, help their star players show it in the run game in the past in the you know receiving game pass game show what they're able to do it's just really about staying healthy and we'll, we'll keep talking about that throughout this video but incredible offensive balance which which will be um you know, really tough for opposing teams. Number two, I think they have a potential. They have potential to have elite pass rush, maybe the best in football. Uh, you know, when you factor in Hassan Reddick, recent years ha has played some elite football. I think his best year of his career so far was two seasons ago, and last year he was not too far off. He wasn't. He was. You know, because two years ago he almost won Defensive Player of the Year. He was in that category, but still played very well last year. Definitely a factor. You can kind of use him in different ways as well, and you know he's going to ball out in this defense with, with the group of guys that are in, in with, with the Jets and the Eagles secondary was given up uh, separation, given up cushion, you know, too early in reps last year. So the pass rush, the we, the Eagles defense was so bad you know, last year, but you look at the pass rush, it's like, this is a really good pass rush, you know, but it really wasn't on them. They just, they had about two seconds to get to the quarterback. Um, you know, so Reddick should be able to do some damage with the rest of this Jets defense. Jermaine Johnson, we'll talk about him more in this video as well. Spoiler. Um, but look where he was his rookie year and look where he was last year. He, he was really good. Probably doesn't get enough credit what he did last year. He has all the traits you look for. Super high motor guy, physical, athletic. This guy is about to break. He kind of broke out last year, but he's really about to break out. I mean, that is a two-headed monster in terms of their edge. Uh, their edge room. Will McDonald was super good and super productive at Iowa State. Didn't get much action at all last year, but look what Jermaine Johnson did the first year. And then Will McDonald was kind of playing out of position, if you remember, at Iowa State. They had a three-man rush, so a lot of time he's lining up over or inside the, the tackle, sometimes outside where he did his damage. is not enough. So it was kind of just more learning an NFL defense and learning where he belongs. Uh, and I, to me... Uh, you know, he his his style or what, what they hope his style could be 
uh, maybe a best case scenario is like a Hassan Reddick, in my opinion. So I think it's great that they have Reddick in front of them. Maybe that was part of their process, their thinking process. Uh, then Michael Clemens is a pretty solid young edge rush option as well. You look at the interior led by Quinn Williams, one of the best interior pass rushers in the game. Uh, this is, I mean, they have a three headed monster, like three stars, or maybe Johnson's going to be a star. He's not one yet, but I think he very well can be very well. Maybe this year. Um, Maybe that's a little bold, but I, I think it's possible. Uh, with, with that group and the linebackers they have, uh, obviously to help and the and the uh, you know and the the corners, the lockdown corners they have, that definitely helps as well. Uh, I think it's uh, they're in line to have a, a crazy good pass rush season. We'll see what happens with Hassan Reddick, though. I know he's he wants a contract and he has uh, there's been some stuff going on. I guess he's been away from the team a little bit. And then number one. The big one when it comes to the Jets, uh, I think they are as complete as anyone in the league. You break it down, go through, the, at least on paper, if they are healthy. Now, if you're predicting them to not stay healthy, then you know then that's, that's a tough prediction to make, but it's a fair one. If, you just don't, if deep down you just don't trust them, I understand it. Um, you know, but, so then you don't think they're that complete, really, I, I guess, because uh, maybe they need better depth because they do have durability concerns. But if you look at this team on paper, uh, you know, just go through this this depth chart. Go through the starters on paper and, and tell me what is the weakest spot of this team. I think most people instantly would say offensive line just because of what, what the offensive line was doing in the past and because it's been beat up every year and they have a, a couple, maybe a few guys that do have durability concerns. So I understand that, you know, depth will be key there, but – if they're healthy, which is possible, all these teams don't get this unlucky every single year in their franchise history, right? They're decent on the offense line if they are healthy. They are decent. So if we're looking through the starters on paper, where we sit right now, which we're kind of, we're evaluating teams based on right now, it's very difficult to find a hole. I don't know if a hole exists. I'd say on paper, on paper, and I keep stressing on paper because it probably won't look like this in the game, but on paper their weakest spot is probably safety. Not that it's bad, but losing Whitehead was pretty tough. I was surprised because he didn't get paid that much and he was really good for them. But safety's not like the most important spot on that defense and they'll get more out of their safeties because who's around them. It's probably the least important spot. It actually is uh, because ed edge rush is the most important in any defense. Interiors right there. Corners are right there. Uh, they all have that. The next debate would be uh, safety versus linebacker, but in, in this um, you know Salah Ulbrich defense linebacker, you know thinking the 49ers background, the line, linebacker is definitely very important to have that. So they have defense cross board. We talk about elite pass rush. They have elite cornerback duo. Um, they have more than just a duo there. Um, you know they have the linebackers. We said it's really the safeties, but they're going to get they're going to play better than what their names are on paper. Tony Adams, the guy that's going to get better and better as well. Um, you know, he's probably a little underrated. Uh, so you look at offense again, offense lines complete. If it's healthy, they have receivers, they have running backs. They have a future star running back. Or maybe right now, star running back in Brees Hall. They have a quarterback. If he's out there in Aaron Rodgers. So um, it's really just about staying healthy. And uh, I think there's people out there that, you know, no one's really predicting them to go far, but it's just like, what if they stay healthy? There's, there's teams that uh, teams go on stretches, it feels like. The teams that just can't stay healthy, they go on like two, three-year, maybe four maximum stretches, and it's like those teams, and then it like rotates. There's a new group of teams uh, that continue to get beat up. you know. So right now, lately, it felt like it felt like the Ravens for a little bit, and, and you know, there's, people are still kind of wondering, but lately it feels like, you know what, the Jets, the Bengals, teams like that that are pretty consistently beat up. Unfortunately, there's more teams than that, but... Um, uh, you know, so it's it just if they stay healthy, this is a legit team because they actually you could it's debatable, I guess. What's not debatable is if they're healthy, they are one of the most they are up there. I should say that's really not debatable. They're up there for most complete roster. But what's debatable, you actually could debate that they're number one most complete. But there are some questions. How good does Aaron Rodgers play? Uh, and, you know, uh, and uh, how how good does uh, yeah really really that off the injury? But uh, players to watch. I got Brees Hall number three. Uh, there was recently I think that was yesterday. Yeah, ESPN always do, every off season they do they pull the coaches, executives, and scouts on uh, 
top 10 players at each position. They started with the running backs and they rank Brees Hall too. So those people know they play, they play against them and they know what he can become and what he's already showing flashes of. So high praise for Brees Hall. And I mean, you could see it uh, as poor as that team was. And he's still a major, major factor in multiple phases. Uh, a reason I lost my my fantasy uh, league because I had to go against Brees Hall that second to last week of fantasy. So I was at the third to last week of the uh, regular season. Uh, just completely beat me, just torched me there, all because of him. But um, yeah, just a great player to watch. And uh, just very curious, is it a more of a passing team or a running team because they have a, this special of a running back? So very excited about him as he was my number one running back in a lot of people's as well. Uh, in that draft class a few years ago. And that injury right away uh, made us a little scared. But So respect to him, kind of bouncing back and being this good. Uh, number two, I'm going to go Jermaine Johnson. I said we'll talk about him more. Look at him year one, so disappointing. They traded up in the first round. They had to have him. And we knew why, because he was a really good player and he wasn't supposed to be there. Uh, and then he was, because it was, but it was so disappointing because of that. And, but they had other good options. So it really wasn't anybody panicking or anything like that. And then last year, he was fantastic. I, there were so many good edge rushers last year that he kind of gets swept under the rug a little bit. Like he was really good. If you watched him play, if you watched Jets football more than just the primetime games, this guy was exploding to the quarterback. Um, you know, a, a combination of his athleticism, just uh, motor, using his length, using his power. You can just see it. You could see the traits in this kid. Um, so that step from year one to year two, what the hell is going to be the step in year three? It, uh, it could be bigger than what people are talking about right now. So um, really excited to watch him and that he could be a big reason. Like we said, it could be an elite pass rush group because they have Hassan Reddick, because they have Quinn Williams. Is that enough to make the group elite? But watch out for Jermaine Johnson being the reason that is an elite group because we know what to expect from Reddick and, Qu Reddick and Quinn and Williams. Number one has to be Aaron Rodgers. I mean, for several reasons, this is an elite quarterback. If he still got the stuff, you know, if he still got it in him, uh, th this is a guy that could – I mean, they, they were even – at times competition for teams with a bad quarterback at times because they're they're running back you know and guys like Garrett Wilson and their defense uh, you know so now they have a quarterback that hey maybe he doesn't have the, the full on talent he once had but he's still extremely smart and you know there's got to be talent in there so what can they be because of that uh, you know so another thing is yeah how is he at this age we still haven't seen him play fully on on a new team other than the Packers and we see what the what the Packers do that, you know, they turn love into a great player. You know, LaFleur is such a good coach and they were, they were one of the better teams in the playoffs, you know? So is it a Packers thing? I think it's a both thing. I think Rodgers was always that good, obviously, and he still probably is. Uh, and then how is he post injury? Like is, does that affect him? And then does he stay healthy? So there's just so many questions when it comes to Aaron Rodgers. I'm on the, I'm on the optimistic side of things. Like the Achilles is kind of a fluke thing. I don't think it's not something you really re injure, um, does he overcompensate somewhere else? And maybe that's more likely, but I still don't think it's likely. Um, so I'm more, I'm opt I'm the, I'm on the positive side of that. Is he still talented? I'm on the positive side of that. Maybe he isn't full go Packers vintage Aaron Rodgers. I think we'll see flashes of that. Uh, he's definitely good enough to, to win them football games and beat He won't be the reason why they're losing football games in my opinion. Um, so the you know and I'm pr I'm pretty positive uh, you know in terms of uh, I guess the yeah, the question is yeah I, how is, is he after the injury like fully like wh wh where where is he at but I, I think good enough there but there are a lot of questions when it comes to Aaron Rodgers uh, games to watch games to watch I'm looking for I have to go week one I have to go at San Francisco week one heavyweight battle uh, San Francisco w wins their games prime time at home you know so if the in week one anything can happen I always preach that but this is a game again 49ers always take care of business prime time at home um they're, they're a pretty like polished team like they're pro ready always like I don't see this being a team that's just not ready for week one are they going to be to their full ability not you no know, I don't think anybody is right but there are like if you had to pick a couple teams like who would is the most prepared the most ready who doesn't have to learn new thing you know who's just ready to go the Niners are up there so at home prime time week one they're going to be ready um they're familiar with Robert Sala you know and what how he coaches his defense you know uh, you know and uh that that makes it interesting as well 
the game plan for both sides. Uh, Rodgers, uh, you know, battled that Niners team or most that Niners team. Uh, one he was with the Packers, obviously, in the past. It's going to be an interesting game. So, like I said, anything can happen in week one, but because the situation, um, it's almost like the Niners should be the favorites. But if the Jets come out of week one with a win, it is absolutely massive. Could be the massive the biggest win of week one uh, Texans in week nine, all, some more guys that are pretty familiar with each other. D'Amico Ryan's versus Robert, Robert Sala, both 49ers background, you know, D'Amico Ryan's took over as DC when Sala left. So that makes it kind of interesting. Two really solid teams. Uh, both will be pretty balanced offensively. Both should have very solid defenses. Uh, that will be a lot of fun in week nine. Just hoping everyone's healthy. And then week 16, uh, the, the Rams, uh, I think that could be a big one that could decide seeding in playoffs, or I guess if they make the playoffs, I would expect both those teams to be in the playoffs, but we will see. Um, but that should be a big time game, you know, later in the year. Um, Stafford, so smart, still so good. He played out of his mind last year. That offense got even better adding the offensive line. They have weapons they can run. How will they go? You know, how will they be going against the Jets defense, which could be the number one defense in football? Um, you know, and could this be a shootout? Is it? Do the Jets? have them overmatch because they can match the offense and they just have a better defense. You know, no Aaron Donald out there anymore. So be an interesting game there in week 16. So fans, thanks. Uh, answer not coaching can't be a headache. Yeah. Kind of a big talking point last year. People kind of complaining about that, but then some people were like, ha, tough to judge. They got such a bad quarterback. Um, so we'll see what happens there. Uh, Aaron Rodgers in, in age 40 season, fresh off Achilles. Yep. Same. Yeah. You know, agree. I think everyone's kind of wondering how it, what Aaron Rodgers are we going to get? You know, because there was even questions going into last year. Like he's not on the Packers anymore. He's on, he's on the Jets. And again, you see what the Packers did with Jordan Love and how good they got at the end of the year. It's like, man, this is just a well-coached, good organization that feels like they're going to be good no matter what. So, interesting improved tackle play, aiding both rush and pass. I mean, yeah, right now Tyrone Smith. Uh, Morgan Moses is a really good duo, which is a little older. And then can they stay healthy? I mean, looking at Tyrone Smith, Malachi Corley. Yeah, like I said, um, I think the talking point there is like they got a fun, pretty solid, uh, explosive rookie receiver. That's always fun, rookie receiver, just in just saying that. But what I think people fail to talk about, like I said, is the um, – He's almost like that missing link to that group, like something they didn't really fully have. Uh, maybe like a prime Randall Cobb, like early years Randall Cobb. Um, might be a little better after the catch, a little more a little more explosive. That's hard to say. Randall Cobb was pretty ridiculous in the younger years, especially coming out of when he was in Kentucky. Um, you know, so kind of something that they needed that, that they can use a lot. Um, maintaining defense, arguably the best unit in football. Yeah, I, I think it'll continue to be that way. The only spot is safety, but it's not that important of a, of a position for them. And I think the rest of the group will get more on him. Jermaine Johnson take the next step, so he's in agreement there. Kinlaw could finally break out. So, yeah, Salah, familiar with him. Kinlaw was such a good player uh, at South Carolina, but super raw. So his best football was supposed to be way ahead of him. So in a way it makes sense, but he's still been extremely underrated and, and people kind of don't like his attitude, things like that. He'll have flashes, so does he put it together? I mean, he's going to play alongside the group we talked about, you know, so that could help him. So that's another breakout candidate, so good take there. Uh, from Adam, what will Aaron Rodgers look like coming off the injury, playing under Hackett's scheme? Yeah, again, I didn't mention that. Like, has Nathaniel Hackett? So that that's great. We didn't really get to see it last year, unfortunately. Can Tyron Smith stay healthy? Yeah, it's the one. I don't think anyone's trusts him to play every single game. We just kind of hope that he's playing most of the games to help him get to the playoffs and playing in the playoffs. Can the defense take another step up? Um, I think it can just because of the pass rush. Jermaine Johnson can take another step up. I mean, one edge rusher. Think about it. What, how, what edge rushers mean to the to, to the league, to the teams. If Jermaine Johnson alone takes another step up, I think the defense takes another step up. But then you have Hassan Reddick in there. If he's out there, that makes him take a step up. Quinn Williams is only getting better. Uh, Will McDonald, Michael Clemens, these guys can only get better. Um, Quincy Williams at linebacker, only getting better. He had an outstanding year last year, was everywhere, flashy, rangy, in the backfield. Uh, Sauce is only getting better. You know, so I, I, when I first saw that question, it's like, they don't really need to get better. They'll probably be around the same, which is one of the best defensive football. But the more I think about it, it's like, yeah, they actually can get better. Scary thought. Take after a slow start. Jets finish 10-7 and seven and get the 7 seed. Garrett Wilson gets 1,500 yards. The Hall has 12. That's a pretty good, yeah, that's a pretty good prediction, you know, because they could probably the underdogs in week one 
tough matchup, but they could win. Uh, but do they start a little slow because the schedule? We will see. Hot take from Tyson. Brees Hall will be an MVP candidate. Yeah, I mean, it's it's possible I, I because of his running ability, but because of his pass catching ability and having Aaron Rodgers out there as well. And uh, there's a lot of hype on him right now. So you could see it. Um, Content Taurus, is it over for Salah and Joe D, Joe Douglas or GM, if they miss the playoffs again? It's a great question, one that will be a talking point. I I think it may be. Um, for Salah, definitely. Like If they miss the playoffs, they're going to get a different coach. I think no question. I think no question there. That's not a tough. That's not a tough one. If they miss the playoffs, Joey Douglas is Joe Douglas is where it comes into question because he could be saying like he could be the one that fires Salah. Like he could be like, hey, I got a good enough team, um, and we didn't make the playoffs. It depends on the scenario, but we didn't make the playoffs. So because we got all these stuff, we got the, okay, a very complete roster. I've been he's been drafting pretty well. It looks like you know after drafts we're going as a pretty good draft again for the Jets. Um, but if they aren't healthy, if they aren't healthy and it blows up and they don't make the playoffs, then he could look worse than Salah than that, you know, because he kind of, he did kind of make it a Super Bowl or bust. He, he did add some good young players though. So it wasn't a full on Super Bowl or bust type off season, but it, he did kind of build up a complete roster, but it being a short term complete roster and limited their window. So if it kind of fails because of the type of guys he built, uh, then the ownership could look at that and be like, yeah, that was more your fault. But I, I still think Salah would be gone. So it's either the head coach or both of them. Um, but it feels like yeah, Joe Douglas overall, like after they make a move, it's like overall I'm left thinking like that's a that's a pretty good move. like the Or a draft pick. Like it's a pretty good draft pick uh, for the most part. I wasn't a you know big fan of some of the guys. You know, there's, not, there's never a perfect draft in my eyes. But um, – you know, overall, like even, and I don't like a Super Bowl or a bust type mentality, which I do think he did have a, a lot of. Uh, when you look at Tyrone Smith, Morgan Moses, these older guys are you know one year, but at the same time, what other tackles are you going to get uh, at their caliber? You might as well get those guys. So that's kind of the uh, argument against it. Maybe it ne- necessarily wasn't a Super Bowl or bust move. It was just like, hey, we have an opportunity to get these good players that can help us now, and they're just better, way better than the other guys that may help a little more in the future. It kind of makes some sense. Uh, and they got some young guys to back up at tackle. Um, I don't think uh, Fashion is ready. I wasn't a huge Fashion guy, but he is a Tyrone Smith, like poor man's Tyrone Smith, so perfect to learn from uh, under him. I like Carter Warren from Pittsburgh last year. Um, he's just about staying healthy with him, too, looking at his last year at Pittsburgh. But um, So a good learning experience from these guys. Uh, but... It's going to be interesting, you know, so Joe Douglas would probably be, it'd probably be, it would remind me a lot of, I'm a Vikings fan, so I kind of relate to that. Rick Spielman, Rick Spielman was a really good GM, I felt like he got good players. Uh, He drafted very, very well, but he did make some decisions where they had the window to win right then and there. It wasn't a Super Bowl or bust year. Um, And then he had, uh, you know, he had to bring in Zimmer and then they kind of didn't get along. And that was, uh, you know, their, their coach at the time, that was kind of issues. But uh, yeah, I don't know if Douglas and Salah have that, but it was more like, my point is it was you tough decision. Cause you have to move on from a guy that, you know, is really good at their job, but because of other things and other decisions, it's like, I guess we got to move on from him. So it's tough. That That's tough. Cause I do think Douglas is a pretty good GM unless at the end of this year, we're going, yeah, that was a complete one year window and they, choked it like they blew it like he built it for this year only if it ends up looking like that which is possible so we will see but that'll wrap it up for the Jets video let me know your thoughts in the comments first comment will decide the next video next team that we do check out that playlist full uh, of the other teams that we have done uh, check out our sponsor liquid IV code goat for a percentage off um, they'll always have new flavors amazing amazing stuff there uh, but that will do it thanks for watching goodbye